Hello friends, welcome or welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley where we like to read Riley, not take ourselves too seriously and have some fun with books. And today we're starting a reading vlog. I'm going to read three new release thrillers starting with the new Karen Slaughter. I'm also going to read Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina and then finally For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. I am recording this in retrospect. I actually already opened this vlog like a week ago and my external microphone was not connected and it just sounded like crap. So I'm refilming it at this point. And so I'm just gonna kind of go over what I did tell you in that clip so that you're not confused moving forward. <laughs> so to start out at this point, I had started False Witness by Karen Slaughter. I wanted to point out the similarities between this and Pretty Girls. We have this distinctive sisterly bond in both Pretty Girls and False Witness. In False Witness, we're following Lee and Callie. The way Karen Slaughter writes these characters is just so good. She's so good at characters. They are flawed in a way that you love them because they're not perfect, but they're also both have these amazing character arcs where they are have a very specific point of view and very specific goals and challenges to get through. I just love that so much. Lee is a defense attorney in the story and Callie is a drug addict and they both are struggling with a lot of trauma. This book is dark like Pretty Girls was. I don't think it's quite as dark, but it's pretty damn close. Also another parallel that I drew between those two books was this dynamic between Lee and her husband. So in this book, she's married, but they're separated. And she has a, Denny, get out of there. Hey, she has the love of this man. Like he adores her with flaws and all. He just loves her and he's such a good guy. But because she's dealing with all of this traumatic stuff from her past, she will not allow herself to fully open up to him and to fully accept that love because she feels like she's not deserving of it. And so she pushes him away to the point where they separate. In the process of everything that she's going through in this novel, I think she starts to understand why and starts to be able to open up to him. That I noticed in, I can't remember the sister's names in Pretty Girls right now, but what doesn't it say? Lydia, oh, that's it. Okay, so Lydia has the same kind of situation in Pretty Girls where she has the love of this man, but she won't let him in either. So we get all of that juicy goodness, getting to know these these characters like we did in the other book, and but it's a completely different setup. Oh, also, um, there's a lot of social commentary. It does mention COVID quite often, but I don't think it gets in the way of the narrative. In fact, I felt like it drew me in because I could relate and... She talks a lot about social issues in this book, which I'll get into more later. In the clip after this, you're gonna see me exercising and you're gonna be like, why is this bitch exercising? Well, here's why, because I started doing the Chloe Ting two week challenge thing. At this point, it was my third day and every muscle in my body was hurting. And I usually stop when that happens, when I start to feel like I'm about 800 years old and I can't even sit down on the toilet like a human, but I didn't, so I'm very proud of that. But yeah, so this is me, just a quick little clip of me exercising, and I think that's really all you need to know at this point moving forward to not feel confused. Darling, you Why am I doing this? I want to get in shape. Hey guys, I haven't read any more of False Witness, but I have some good news to share, and that is that I just got accepted to Western Michigan University, which is where I originally went to school. I'm coming back. Not physically, but via the interwebs. Very excited. Just wanted to share that with you guys. <laughs>
Boy, I see you. Get out of there. Good morning. I am making coffee. I'm going to go sit outside for a little bit and do some affirmations and try to get my head right for the day. And then I'm going to work out. <laughs> I'm not awake yet. I'll check in later. Hey. What you doing? Hey, bye. Okay, I found this affirmation last night that, like, is really just... You know? And it's longer than this, but the part that's hitting me is... Now I've forgotten it. I possess the courage to push through discomfort in the pursuit of ambitious goals. I possess the courage to push through discomfort in the pursuit of ambitious goals. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> Checking in with you. So I've run a bunch of errands. I got all my exercises done. I've been listening to False Witness. Pretty productive day. Clean the house, did all that stuff. Denny, I need you to chill. I started into the real game, y'all. The real game on Instagram. Get it, real game? You came for the books, you stayed for the mom jokes. <laughs> Danny! No! Alright, go get it. If y'all aren't following me on Instagram, hop on over. It's Reading Riley, same as this. Come on over. I'm doing some fun reels. I'm having fun with it and being creative. So, I'm on chapter 23. I've got two hours left of the audiobook at the speed I have it on right now. And it's like a 14 hour audiobook, so I'm pretty far into it. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say I'm about 85%. I don't know if you can, can you see it? Yeah. And this one is probably going to be my next read. Not a happy family. Looking forward to that too. But anyway, tonight I'm going to do more reading for the next hour. Just hang out and relax. And then tonight my husband and I are doing Dining in the Dark. So I'm really excited for that. It's supposed to be like a dining experience where you... You're blindfolded or it's just pitch black or something and you eat a meal in the dark. <laughs> I don't know. But before that, he has agreed to take me book shopping. So if you guys watched my game that I did, I'll, I'll uh, put the card up here or something. But I did the blindfold book challenge with my husband, Jordan. And he told me that if I won, he would... Oh, Denny. He would buy me a hundred dollars in books and I fucking won. <laughs> yes, I feel so good to be victorious. So I'm going book shopping y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Who knows? Maybe I'll find something new. I don't know. I'm excited. So anyway, um, as far as reading check-in, God, I'm just sitting here blabbering. This book is so good. There's... <sighs> I can't explain to you guys how good of a writer Karen Slaughter is. She's just the best. This book touches on, like I said, it touches on drugs, drug use. It touches on rape and rape culture. It touches on privilege, on race, the situation with the police. It touches on just like every social issue you can think of. COVID being one of them. And the story itself is so good. And these women are fucking badasses. Right, Denny? Yeah, I'm not going to go into the plot. I'm loving this book. I'm loving it. So I will check in when I finish it. Because um, I'm almost done. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>
you up in phone, 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 ph
uh, be relatable at any point when somebody reads them. But she said that she wanted to take a stance in this book because of everything that's been going on. She couldn't just stay silent about it and that this book represents her specific unique perspective. And I just respect her so much for that. The things she talked about were so well done aside from the narrative of the story. And the story itself was really good too. So I really liked it. It wasn't quite as twisty as Pretty Girls. You still get really invested in these characters and you still root for them. So moving on, I have read, I was trying to decide what to read next. So I read the first chapter of Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina and also A Familiar Sight by Brianna Labuskis. And right now I am the most interested in Not a Happy Family. So I'm going to continue on with that. Hey, what's up, friends? It is Monday, August 9th. <laughs> I've been really bad this weekend. Sorry, Z Denny has the zoomiest right now, so I'm gonna hear him being wild. Um, yeah, I have kind of checked out this weekend. We had my stepdaughter and then we also lost internet like it's still not back up they couldn't come until today to fix it so i just finished my workout for today day eight as far as exercising update goes i haven't lost any weight but i feel really good and the exercises are getting a lot easier i still dread them um it's so hard and i sweat so much but i'm proud of myself for sticking with it at this point and then book update i am halfway through not a happy family and this is by Sherry Lapina. So far, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. It's very much reading like a murder mystery. It's not reading like a thriller at all. I'm halfway through and like nothing thrilling has happened. But basically the setup is that, Denny, can you relax for like two seconds so I can talk to the people? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a no. I have this family in New York. The parents are really rich. They have three kids and they all get together on Easter Sunday and have their dinner and they all have problems. And the next day they found out they find out the parents have been murdered. Each one of these siblings has motives to kill their parents for the money for one way or another. Catherine, the oldest, she wants the house. Dan, the middle kid, he has a grudge against his dad because his dad got a really good offer for his business that he was kind of grooming the son Dan to take over one day. And he got an offer to sell the business and so he just sold it. And now Dan is like destitute, can't find a good job. And his dad won't lend him any money. His dad's a total asshole. This guy is a prick. Then Jenna is risking getting her allowance cut off. She's an artist. So they all have motivations to kill their dad, not necessarily their mom, but they both end up dead. And so we're halfway through the book and you know, I'm kind of annoyed because they're just, it's one of those things where they're lying for no reason. Like maybe there's a reason, one of them at least maybe has a reason to lie. But it's like when you're in that situation with the police and you didn't do it, either one, just don't say anything. Just lawyer up, don't say a word. Probably the, the smartest thing to do. Or two, be honest, because if you lie, then you look guiltier than you did from the beginning. Even if you're lying because you think it's going to make you look guilty, they're going to find your shit out. Like, and so it's frustrating to me to read. They're just making dumb decisions. And then there's this aunt, the dad's sister, who is like hovering around the investigation. And she seems kind of like a pain in the ass too, but I don't know what's up with her. And then there's this like best friend. I, I don't know. There's other people being introduced. So potentially it's not any of the kids that actually did this, but... I don't know. It's kind of moving slow for me at this point. But that being said, you know, it is, it, for what it is, it's fine. It's just fine. So today I have a million things to do. I'm gonna go hop in the shower right now and then I'm going to clean, read. I have to film a couple of videos for y'all so I can get something up because this obviously is taking longer than planned. And then I have to do some Instagram stuff. 
I have an appointment with my advisor. I have to get the internet working when they get here, potentially take the dog to the dog park, a few other things I can't think of at the moment. But anyway, this is your check-in. I will be back. Danny boy. I think we wore you out, huh? I think we finally did it. We did it. We're at the dog park. And no one else is here. Boo. Hey y'all. Okay, I need to check in. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm doing really bad at vlogging. I started strong. I started strong. But it's come to this. I have to update you guys. I finished Not a Happy Family. I didn't love it. Don't go into this thinking it's a thriller because it's not a thriller. It is a murder mystery. And that's fine. Even that being said, I was disappointed. I thought there was going to be some twist. Not even a twist, but I thought the reveal of the murderer was going to be shocking. And it wasn't. I felt like it was mediocre. It was fine. Like I got into it. I'm not mad at it. Like I, I was into it and I was happy to be reading it. So it's not like I was actively disliking this book. I was just hoping to be fooled. The person it turned out to be, I mean, I thought that from the beginning, but then it just seemed too obvious. So I didn't want to go there, but that's where it went. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm just not super happy with this, especially after reading The Couple Next Door, which I really enjoyed. I thought this was going to do more for me and it just didn't. That's all there is to it. I think I'm between two and three stars, maybe 2.5. I'm not sure. But yeah, overall, just not impressed by it. Putting aside that I was expecting to be thrilled because I thought it was a thriller and putting aside my expectations and all of that, even from the lens of this being a murder mystery instead of a thriller it just wasn't great and I hate to say it this is my second Sherry Lapina and so now I'm kind of in the middle here I'm not sure what to think of this author because I really liked Couple Next Door and didn't really like this one so I'll have to do a tiebreaker let me know if you guys have any recommendations for a good Sherry Lapina right now I'm a little bit disappointed but that being said moving on I also have started For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. And I did tell myself I was going to read her last book before I did read this one, but I totally forgot and I started it. So, you know, I can still read the other one. I think it's called He Started It. He Started It? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. I'm actually pretty far into For Your Own Good. <laughs> I think I'm like 70 or 75% through this. How am I feeling about this? I am kind of, it's kind of been a roller coaster ride for me. At the beginning, I really enjoyed it. Teddy Critcher is a teacher at Belmont Academy and he's a perfectionist and he wants his students to be the best. And oh my gosh, I'm like such a mess right now. But he's a fucking asshole too. And he's an interesting perspective to read this story from because he is just warped. He's a dick. Like he's nice presenting but if a, if he doesn't like a student they're just not gonna get an A that's all there is to it if he thinks they're pretentious or elitist or what have you and a lot of them are because they're like rich kids then he docks their grade for it even if they their work is perfect and he's an English teacher so there's a lot of gray area as far as the grading goes he picks on the wrong students let's just say that now, as far as the dark academia vibes go for this, I'm not really getting that like I did from um, The Maidens. So like The Maidens, you very much got that kind of gothic vibe, that old school richness, that what I consider to be dark academia. This one, I'm not really getting it. I'm just getting, I'm getting rich kid vibes, but it's not rich in atmosphere. So if you're reading this for that aspect, maybe it won't be for you. There was a middle section of this where I just felt like it was around the 50% mark. I felt like it was dragging and it does feel a bit long, but I am now getting drawn back into the narrative and enjoying it again. There's more going on than meets the eye. There's, there are things below the surface that are interesting. I'm not loving it. I'm not hating it. I do like Samantha Downing's writing. Oh, one thing she did though that really bothered me was she brought up COVID one time. Just in passing, the kids were talking and they were like, oh, I hope it's not the Rona or something like that. And I, 
that bothered me because it's like I just read that Karen Slaughter where she talks about it and she actually says something about it but this one it felt more like it felt more contrived like she wanted to mention it to be relevant whereas Karen Slaughter had to mention it to talk, say something about it it's like okay um so this is set in 2021 or 2020 and they're supposed to be wearing masks but then why didn't you mention that ever again like obviously that's a part of life but it's not any other part of the story so I didn't like that they mentioned that from right now from where I'm standing I feel like it's probably either a 3.5 or a 4 for me if there is some twist that I don't know about it's gonna be a 4 but it's weird because you know everything that happened like you know it's not like the family next door where it's a murder mystery like you know from the start what's happening who's doing it how they're doing it all of that so in that sense I don't know that there is going to be some kind of reveal as opposed to just a natural conclusion I'm hoping that there's some kind of stinger in here because that's what I live for so we'll see and I will touch base with you guys again after I finish it hopefully that will be tomorrow <sighs> okay guys so I finished for your own good and so I'm gonna kind of talk to you about that while I'm making my lunch oh my god I'm so excited for a grilled cheese I have been craving pizza like like a mad person like I want pizza so bad and before I started like trying to eat healthy and doing all this stuff I ate pizza my husband and I both ate pizza like at least twice a week and I miss it I miss pizza so much but we have been eating healthier so that's good but I'm gonna have some pizza soon because I want it I just finished for your own good this morning and I'm not gonna lie I I was not happy with the ending which is unfortunate because when I read My Lovely Wife, I was so obsessed with it. Like, I thought Samantha Downing was one of those writers, like Karen Slaughter, that is just brave, that will go there, that will take it there. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily feel like she did that in this novel. I did enjoy the perspective of Teddy Crutcher, who was our main character. And I did enjoy that it wasn't your typical mystery or like murdery setup. Like I liked that it was, it was unique in that regard as to kind of how everything went down in our perspective. I guess it's mainly our perspective because we are following from inside his mind. And so you get to know things that you wouldn't typically get to know. But I didn't necessarily feel like there was any big twists. Like there were a few things where it was exciting and it kept me moving forward in the narrative and in the story. But I also felt like I wanted the last little bit to be some kind of shocking moment. And I didn't get that. And I hate to end this vlog um, on a low note because I wanted to love all three of these and I honestly thought I was going to love all three of these. This just didn't work out that way. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end up giving this 3.5 stars. The ending I actually thought was kind of cheesy. It was like Samantha Downing wanted it to be more effective than it actually was with like the last sentence. It kind of ties back to the title. But I was just like, okay. Okay, is it going to be... Okay, so where this left off, if there was another book, like it seemed it was kind of like a cliffhanger, like it doesn't need to be to have another book in the series, but it could. And if it did, that might be cool. I didn't feel like it was as gritty as Samantha Downing's previous book that I read was. I more than liked it, so that's 3.5 stars. But I'm just not, I can't praise it like I wanted to praise it. Um, but I'm still going to read He Started It. I still want more from Samantha Downing. I just hope that whatever book she comes out with next, she really like takes it there. And really just goes that extra, extra mile to the grit and the darkness and the, you know, and that like, Arr. So I'm going to wrap up this vlog. But if you are still watching this, thank you so much. 
I appreciate you more than you could know. And if you want to see more videos like this, then and you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I, I just could not be more thankful for those of you who are subscribed to me. I just, I just love you so much. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget, life is short. So read Riley. Cheers and goodbye.